21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. No, CB, no word on it yet. Well, we've got men out searching the whole area. Yeah, we located the cab driver. The detectives are talking to him now. That's right. You are by yeah, transcription yeah. in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right, CB. I'll let you know as soon as anything happens. Yeah, right away. Okay. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their prisons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my day tour, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. It was a bright, sunny Saturday, and for the first time of the year, people from all over the city flocked to the zoo, the mall, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and other attractions in Central Park. By 2 p.m., the traffic on Fifth Avenue was jammed. I went over to Fifth Avenue in sector car number four for a first-hand look at the condition. A half hour later, I instructed the operator, Patrolman Jacoby, to return to the station house. As we were driving there, in East 78th Street, I saw the sergeant's car double parked at the entrance to a large modern apartment house. The operator was sitting at the wheel. I instructed Patrolman Jacoby to pull up behind it. All right, wait here. Hello, Captain. Well, what's the trouble, Coley? I don't know exactly, Captain. We rang in from there on Madison Avenue and 76th Street. Lieutenant Gorman told Sergeant Waters to come on over here and talk to a Dr. Wheel. That's his office there on the ground floor. You see the sign, Captain? Yeah. What's it all about? This kid got lost. Well, how old a kid? I don't know exactly, Captain. All right, I'll go in and see what it's all about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I help you? I'm Captain Canelli. Is uh, Sergeant Waters in there with Dr. Wheel? Uh, yes, he is. I'd like to go in and see them. Well, Dr. Wheel said that... All right, Captain Connolly. Connolly. Oh, yes. I'll ring him. <laughs> you don't think anything's happened to her, do you? It's been nearly two hours now. In two hours. Doctor, there's another policeman here. Yeah. Captain Connolly. All right. Yes, Doctor. Yes, sir. Would you go right into the consultation room, Captain? It's right through that door. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Douglas, would you like a glass of water? Come in, Captain. Hello, Captain. Sergeant, this is Dr. Wheel, Captain Kennelly. Doctor, glad to know you, Captain. This child's missing, Captain. Six-year-old girl. Doctor put her in a cab to go home. Uh, Miss Wallace, my nurse, did. I told you that. And she never got home? No, sir. We didn't know anything was wrong, but she didn't get there until my wife telephoned. What time was she put into the cab? About a quarter after one. And where was the cab supposed to take her, Doctor? 290 East 68th Street. That's not a five-minute ride from here, and it's been nearly an hour and a half since she left. What was your daughter's name, Doctor? Sarah. And uh, exactly how old is she? Six. She'll be seven in August. In a cab or not, Doctor, that's a little young to let a child travel alone. Well, I know it is, but I couldn't help it, Captain. The nurse took the hack's registration on the Captain. Well, that's something. You see... My wife and I have been separated a couple of months. Oh? Yes, I've been taking Sarah on Saturday afternoons and Sundays. But today I had a patient in the hospital, an emergency. You see, Captain, I usually finish with my office hours at noon, and my wife drops Sarah by here. 
But today I didn't get back to the office until nearly noon, and there were a couple of patients waiting for me. And it so happened that one of her friends has a birthday party this afternoon, and I promised to have her home by 1.30 so she could get dressed and go. I couldn't take her myself, and, well, I didn't see any harm in putting her in a cab. It's done every day. Well, Doctor, looks like you picked the wrong day. Well, my nurse took the license number. You can find the cab, can't you? Yes, we can find it. But the important thing is to find the child, not the cab. How did your nurse get the cab? Just flag it down on the street? Well, I imagine so. You'll have to ask Miss Wallace. I was in here busy with a patient. What can we do to find her, Captain? I'm really worried now. Your daughter is six years old. She knows her full name, her address, and telephone number, doesn't she? Yes, of course she does. She's quite a bright child. All right. We'll get the detectives over here right away, Doctor. Good. I sure appreciate you going out of your way like this. We're not going out of our way. When a child of that age is missing, it's standard procedure to get everybody on the job and keep them there. Well, that's fine. Now, Doctor, when you spoke to your wife, did she make any effort around the building there to see if the girl had arrived? Yes, she went down and talked to the doorman. He hadn't seen her. Neither had the elevator operator. And does your daughter have any playmates in the building? Maybe she went into another apartment. Well, it's just one little girl she sees. My wife called there. They're away for the weekend, the whole family. How did you get this information? Did your wife call you back? Yes. That's why it took me a little while before I phoned the police. I was waiting for her to call back. Yeah. Uh, oh, excuse me. Yes, yeah, sure. Yes? Did you uh, notify the desk officer yet, Sergeant? No, sir. I just got here a couple of minutes before think... you did. Uh, uh, would you tell her I'll only be a few minutes more, Miss Wallace? Yes, thank you. Oh, if there's any word, you let me know immediately. All right. I have one patient still waiting, Captain. I'd send her home, but she has rather an acute throat condition. I think I ought to see her. All oh, right, you go ahead. We'll talk to your nurse in the meantime. Oh, that'll be fine. This won't take me more than a few minutes. And then maybe I ought to go to my wife's apartment. I can look around the neighborhood. We'll look around the neighborhood, Doctor, but you'll have to stay here and talk to the detectives. Well, why here? She's not around here. Well, that's the way we work in these cases. The search has started from the place the child was last seen. Oh, I see. All right, Miss Wallace. Uh, ask Mrs. Douglas to come in, please. This won't take me long. Mrs. Douglas. Well, that's all right. Well, we have to make a few phone calls anyway, Doctor. You go right in, Mrs. Douglas. I'm sorry, Mrs. Douglas, that you have to wait. Do you think you'll be able to find her soon? As soon as we can. I took down the license number of the cab, you know. Yeah, I know. The doctor gave it to me. What kind of a cab was it? Do you remember, Miss Wallace? Well, it was a blue and yellow one. Was it one of the large ones or one of the new smaller ones? It was a large one. You better ring in, Sergeant. Get the detectives over here. Yes, sir. Uh, can I use it? Well, yes, of course. Thank you. I told the driver the address. And I also had it written down on a slip of paper for him. I, I gave him the slip of paper. Hello, this is Sergeant Waters. Let me talk to Lieutenant Gorman. He looked all right. Okay. He said he'd take good care of her. Hello, Lieutenant. Sergeant Waters. I'm this girl missing over here. It's a child under the age of seven. The name is Sarah Weald. W-E-A-L-D. Uh, let's uh, step over here, Miss Waller. All right. Yeah, the father's a doctor. Sit down. Yes. You don't suspect the cab driver of anything. I, I mean, he looked all right to me. Well, we'll find him and see. How long have the uh, doctor and Mrs. Wheel been separated? I don't know. A couple of months. Nearly three, I suppose. Uh -huh. You know the reason for their difficulty? No. Well, now you must have some idea. Well, I knew they hadn't been getting along very well. What was it? Another woman or money or what? To tell you the truth, I think they just got plain tired of each other. I hate to use the word, but bored. He spent all his time working. When he wasn't here, he was at the hospital. He's a bridge player. He doesn't care for medicine, and he doesn't care for bridge. I guess that's the answer. How long have they been married, do you know? About ten years, I guess, just after he got out of the Army. And uh, how long have you been working for him, Miss Waller? Not quite a year. I see. The separation had nothing to do with me, if that's what you're thinking. I married myself and very happily. I just continue to use my maiden name professionally. Where is the doctor living now? Oh, he has a small apartment in this building, upstairs. I don't know why you're asking me all these questions for, Captain. 
It would seem to me they could do a lot better if you go out and look for Sarah. Well, sometimes the answers to questions give us a good idea where to look. Okay, Captain. Lieutenant Gorman has notified the detectives and CB. All right. They're putting out a teletype right away, and the detective will be on the job in a few minutes. Good. Uh, would you go outside, Sergeant, and see Jacoby? Yes, sir. Tell him to pick up his partner and resume patrol. Okay, Captain. Right away. I'm sorry, Captain. I'm just a little upset. Yes, well, that's all right. I understand. I don't know what you can do, where you can start. We've started already, Miss Wallace. A teletype alarm has gone out to all the 81 precincts in the city. One of them might be holding Sarah and not know who she is. By now, probably a radio broadcast has gone out, too, to all cars on patrol. Well, that ought to do something. And all the men on foot patrol between here and the residence will be given her description when they ring in. What about the cab driver? Well, we'll find out who he is through the registration number. We'll get him up here. I don't know why I took the number of the cab. I didn't have any premonition or anything like that. I just felt it would be a good idea because he's so young. Yes, well, it turned out to be. What time did uh, Sarah get here? It was about noon. Mrs. Wheeler had been leaving her here every Saturday at noon. And Sarah and the doctor would spend the rest of the day together. Oh, there's Mrs. Wheeler. All right, you let me do the talking. Have you found her yet? No, well, not yet, Mrs. Wheeler. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Captain Kennelly. We're just getting a start, Mrs. Wheeler. Well, I, I didn't know what to do around the apartment. I, I had to come here and, and find out something. Well, there's nothing to find out yet. Is there uh, someone at home in case Sarah's brought home? Yes, the maid's there. I, I don't understand it. I don't know where he could have taken her. Well, first of all, we've got to presume the cab driver let her out where he was told to, at your apartment. Well, building. I talked to the doorman and the elevator operator, and they didn't see her, neither of them. Is there any place in the building she might have gone besides this uh, one playmate's box? No, no, no place that I know of. Well, could she have gone into any of the stores in the block or around the corner? Well, when I came down, I did ask in a couple of them. I, I went into the drugstore. I took her there for ice cream, and they hadn't seen her. And she, she's a very sensible little girl. She wouldn't wander off. She, well, she shows a lot of responsibility for six years old. She wouldn't do anything like that on her own. I'm sure it's the cab driver. You shouldn't have put her in a cab alone. That's the one thing you shouldn't have done. We've done it before, Mrs. Well, Wheel. you shouldn't have done it this time. Where's the doctor? He's in with a patient. A patient? How can he take care of a patient now? Why isn't he out looking for Sarah? He should be out combing the street. Now, Mrs. Wheel, that'll all be taken the care of. The patients come first. Everybody's troubles except his own. This woman has a very bad cough, Mrs. Wheel. He's trying to help her. My child is missing. Why doesn't he try to help me? Why doesn't he even try to help himself? That's what I don't understand. Miss Wallace. George. Yes, Doctor. Uh, would you go inside, please? Have you done anything to find this? Just a minute, Gloria. Just a minute? I want you to take the hemoglobin and the differential on Mrs. Douglas. Yes, Doctor, I will right away. Now, listen, George. Have you heard anything, Captain? No, not yet, Doctor. Now, this is a fine way to carry out your responsibilities. Whoever heard of sending a six-year-old child home alone in a cab? All right, Gloria. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, absolutely ashamed of yourself. Now, please. Heaven only knows where your child is. And you do nothing but take care of some, some patient, a stranger. All right, Gloria. The police are here. They're going to do everything they can. They'll find her. She never should have been lost. That may be so, Mrs. Wheels, but she is. Let's find her. You are listening to 21st Precinct, the factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Precinct will take a brief vacation and on its return will be heard on a different day and at a different time. Please listen for details at the conclusion of tonight's show. Now, back to 21st Precinct and Captain Frank Kennelly. There are few occurrences which are handled with more urgency than the report of a missing child. The action to be taken is described in great detail in the Manual of Procedure and Rule 316. With or without suspicion of a crime being involved, the desk officer is obliged to refer the report to the precinct detective squad commander for immediate investigation. Then, as required in no other case, the desk officer must personally and forthwith notify the detective commander at borough headquarters, the immediate superior of the precinct squad commander. Assistance in the form of men, radio motor patrol cars, police launches, emergency service trucks and cars, and the facilities of any other department of the city are required to be made available forthwith on request of the detective commander in charge. All superior officers of the patrol force concerned must cooperate with the detective commander and render any assistance requested. In the case at hand, Lieutenant Matt King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad, 
arrived at the doctor's office within five minutes after he was notified. Under his direction, a complete search of the area was organized with both uniformed officers and detectives participating. At 20 minutes to four, he was in the waiting room talking to the mother as I listened. The doctor was out in a cruiser with detectives scouring the district. Mrs. Weald, I want you to think a minute and see if there's any other place. Any other place in the neighborhood Sarah might have gone. No, there's no place else. No place I haven't thought of. Did she ever roam around on the streets alone? No, I, I told you I didn't permit that. Well, uh, was there any place else besides that one spot in the park that you took her to play? No, just, just there and school, that's all. And the only relative you have in town is this one brother. Yes, that's Hello? right. Does the doctor have any family? Yes, yes, he does. But as I told you, they all live over in Jersey. Well, she wouldn't know how to get there. She wouldn't even know their addresses. Uh, how about some of her schoolmates? Does she ever visit them? Yes, she does on occasion. Yes. Well, now, uh, this was a school friend whose birthday party she was supposed to attend this afternoon. But actually, she wouldn't know how to get there by herself. She's only six. D did you check that place again? She just may have gone there. I don't know how she would have gotten there. I had a detective stop by there. They promised to call us if Sarah did show up. Well, Mrs. Miller yes. would call. She, she's very dependable. Lieutenant King. Yes, Sergeant. That was the desk officer. Yeah. They located the hacky in the 18th. Oh, does, does he know where Sarah is? No, apparently not, Mrs. Will. Oh. An RMP car in the 18th set the alarm over the air and saw the cab making a turn at the Broadway. This cab was empty. They rang in and were instructed to bring him to this address. And that's all they said? Nothing else? Well, we'll talk to the driver himself in a few minutes, Mrs. Will. Well, he said he could have found out more from him. We'll find out all he knows. Well, I certainly hope you do. I suppose oh, there's my husband. George! George, did you find her, George? No, we didn't. Well, did you look? Gloria, these detectives drove me through every street within here in ten blocks of the apartment. We didn't see any sign of her. Well, did you look? What do you mean? Did I look? Of course I looked. George, if this is some trick to get it's her away from me, trick. if it is, I'm going to kill you. I swear I'm going to no, kill you. No, no, no. You're not going to do it, George. You're not going to do it to me. Now, please. She's lost, Gloria. I want to find her. I want to find her as much as you I'll do. I'll believe that when you prove it to me. Now, look, we're not going to get any place if you two are fighting with each other. Now, he's right, Gloria. Now, please. I'll believe it when I see it. Sergeant, yes, sir. When I see it. Go outside and wait for that hack driver. Bring him right in here when he comes. Yeah, Lieutenant. Right away. Everybody's standing around here. Nobody seems to be doing anything. Why doesn't somebody do something and look for us? You want to know what's being done, Mrs. Wheel? I'd just like to see some results. Your husband was riding around that neighborhood with a couple of detectives. We brought in men from other precincts and from the emergency service division. We have detectives from other squads and from the borough headquarters. We're going into every building over there. We're searching the halls and the basements and the roofs. We're looking every place. Well, we'll know more as soon as we talk to that cab driver. He's going to lie to you. Don't you know that? Now, Mrs. Wheel. He's going to lie to you. Uh, Gloria, why don't you come inside and lie down on the couch? I want to be right here. I want to know what's going on. Well, as soon as we know anything, you will. Now, come on inside. I'll give you something to relax. Oh, no, you won't. Gloria, please. Yes, I uh, I think it's a good idea, Mrs. Wheel. Why don't you go in and lie down? I promise I'll let you know as soon as we do hear something. You really promise? Yes, I do. Well, I, I ought to try and relax a little bit. Yes, you should. But you're not going to give me anything. All right, I won't try to give you anything. Well, don't blame her too much, man. It isn't easy. Nothing. Captain. Yes, Miss Wallace. I understand we've located the cab driver. Yes, we have. That's good. You're positive you can recognize him? Well, I'm not positive, but I think I can. Hasn't it been an awfully long time? I mean, somebody would have found her by now, a policeman or just an ordinary person. They'd have seen her and known something was the matter, that she was lost. All right. All right, then. That's him. That's the cab driver. Okay. Step right over here. Yeah, sure. This is the cab driver, Albert Sprizio. Captain Kennelly. Hi. How do you do? Lieutenant King. Hello, Lieutenant. No. And this is Miss Wallace. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you were the lady that gave me the address where to go with the kid. Yes. Where did you take the child from here? Oh, where she said to take it. 290 East 68th Street, right? That's right. Oh, that's where I took it. Yeah. Oh, so I got my call card. I brought it in. See? See on there? From here to 290 East 68th. It's written down. 1.50 p.m., 65 cents on the clock. Let's go over there and sit down, Mr. Spriggum. Al, everybody calls me Al. Why, I'm telling you, when that squad car came around after me and cut me into the curb... Uh, sit down. Yeah. 
I didn't know what was the matter. I mean, knew I didn't run no lights or anything like that. Right on Broadway there. And you know something? Those guys play it cagey. They won't tell me what it's all about for a minute. I got to squeeze it out of them. You say you took a little girl right to the address? Right to the address. Right to the door. Somebody gives me a responsibility with a six-year-old, I take it serious. How did you know she was sick? Oh, she told me. Sorry, she said her name was Sue. Uh, we got into a regular conversation. Well, when you left here, how did you go? Uh, what do you mean, how did I go? My route? Yeah. Well, uh, oh, listen, do you mind if I smoke a cigar? No, go ahead. How about you? No, thanks. Uh, Captain? No. Okay. Here you go. Oh, much obliged. Now, which way did you go? Well, I, uh, I went straight over here to park... And I went down a park to 68 and over to 68 to the bowling there. Was there a doorman on the job when you got there? Nobody. You didn't see a doorman? Nobody. What did you do? Oh, I I threw up the flag and I got out of the car and let the little girl out. Where'd she go? Straight inside the building. Lady here said watch her, so I watched her until she opened the door and went inside the building. You remember what that building was like? Yeah, sure. It's a new kind. It's that red brick and there's a blue canopy out front. Then what did you do? I got back in the car, and right away I got another job. Then another. I've been busy all afternoon, midtown mostly. A lot of shoppers on Fifth Avenue. You married, Al? Oh, yeah. You got any children? Three. Two boys and a girl. My girl's about the same age as this kid. I was telling her I got a girl, too. Uh, Josie's my kid. You ever been arrested? Me? No, not even a traffic summons. I've been pushing a hack since I got home from the wars. Ten years nearly, and I haven't gotten tagged once. Not a record, huh? Why, when my heart was down a hill and those cops curbed me, I could see my mark falling. Listen, uh, no kidding now. How serious is uh, Have you got any ideas what happened to the kid? No, we thought you could help us. You know me. If I could, I would. Al, uh, you were talking to her about your daughter? That's right. Uh-huh. What was the conversation? Well, I, uh, I asked this kid what grade she was in. She said first. And I said I got a girl in first grade, too. We got to talking about what my kid liked and what she liked. And out of a clear blue sky, she asked me, was I separated? Separated from what, I said. From the army, yeah, but from my wife, no. That all she said? No kid talk, you know. She wants to know if her mother and father are separated. Why can't she be separated, too? I said it ain't in the cards. Kids don't get separated from their mother and father. I said, listen, you don't think she was serious? That she wanted to get separated. They're crying out loud, those kids today. What else did she say? Nothing. Come to think of it, nothing. I got a red light and I pulled up. I turned around to look at her and she was sitting way back there on the seat. Thinking like, you know. And saying another word, that kid. Till I pull up in front of the building there. How do you like that? Oh. Captain, let's go in and talk to the parents. Yeah. Uh, you want me? No, you sit right here a minute, Al. <laughs> Listen, if you don't think I'll be around here long, do you? I gotta make a buck five months to see. I'll get you out as quick as we can, Al. I'd appreciate that. He's all right, Captain. Yeah. Sergeant Waters. Yes, sir. Stay on the job here. I'll be right out. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Wheel isn't asleep, is she, Doctor? I'd like to talk to the two of you. No, she's not asleep. Would you come in? Yeah, sure. Did you hear anything? Is there any news? Yes, there's no news, Mrs. Weald, but the cab driver's here. Where? Oh, uh, Gloria, you'd better rest. No, I don't want to rest. Where is he? I want to talk to him. Well, we've talked to him already, Mrs. Weald. Well, what did he say? He said he picked up Sarah in the cab there. He deposited her at the door over the apartment house. He walked in the front door. He, he's sure it was our building? Yes, he's sure, and so am I. Is he telling the truth, Lieutenant? I take a bet on it. The doorman didn't see him. No, no. He, he told me himself that he didn't. The cab driver said the doorman wasn't on the job when he got there. Well, that's right. Oh, yes. He, he did say that he went down to the basement for a few minutes to get something for a tenant, but he was only gone a few minutes. Well, it must have been the right few minutes. And, and that's all you know? Nothing else? Oh, Gloria. Don't Gloria me. We, uh, we don't know where she went, but we might know why she went. Why? She wanted to get uh, separated, too. Sarah? That's what she told the cab driver. Well, now, where would a six-year-old get such ideas? That's ridiculous. Yes, it does sound kind of ridiculous, but 
I guess we all know where she got the idea. Oh. Yes, I guess we do. Oh, Come in. Oh. Captain. Yes, what is it, Sergeant? The desk officer called. They got it down at the 17th Precinct Station house. Oh, thank God. Is she all right? Yeah, she's fine. Yes. They found her roaming around on 57th Street. A patrolman on post. 57th Street? Well, that's 13 blocks. What was she doing way down there? How did she get there? I guess she walked. Yeah, can we go? Can we go there right now? Yes, we can go. Oh, come on. George, will you come and see that she's all right? Yes, I'll come. She, she wanted to get separated, too. What? Silly. Yes, it is, isn't it? But how are you going to convince her of that? Oh, uh, can they ride down on the squad car? Man, is it still here? Yeah, I think so. George. Yes. Well, is it silly to ask you to come home to dinner tonight? No. Just for Sarah's sake. All right. Uh, Sergeant, would you tell Vitaly to drive Dr. and Mrs. Wheel down to the 17th? Yes, sir. Are you ready, folks? Yes, yes, we're ready. Oh, goodbye. And thanks. Thanks a lot, Captain. Oh, it's quite all right. Well, where is it, 17th or whatever it is? 51st. Oh, big afternoon for us, Captain. Yeah, but it may turn out to be bigger for them. Twenty first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Now where is this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, who is it? His wife? Hitting with what? Oh. All right. I'll send the officers right over there. So who are you? Oh, a tenant there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see. On what floor? And so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry go round. Anyone can catch the brass ring, or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct Transcribed A factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolmen's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. This is the last broadcast in the current series of 21st Precinct. The cast and production staff are going to take a brief vacation. Please watch your local newspapers and listen to your CBS radio station for word of our return to the air. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly. Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Harold Stone as Sergeant Waters. Featured in tonight's cast were Lola Pizer, Jan Miner, Les Damon, and Frank Campanella. Written and directed by Stanley Nitz. George Bryan speaking. <laughs>